Hello, this is Ben Hollifield here with a quick walkthrough of the Stagehand app for ServiceNow. Um, now, Stagehand is an app that uh, you wouldn't so much use in a customer environment for um, for day-to-day -day use. It's an app to help out those of us who need to develop applications in ServiceNow and then demonstrate them to, uh, to customers, to other users, to whomever. Um, we know whenever we set up a new demo of any application, there's always the process of setting up the data you need, of manipulating the data you need, um, perhaps triggering some events to happen during a demo, and then finally tearing all that data back down and then cleaning up the environment once you're done. Stagehand makes all that a little bit easier. And you'll see that it is out there on Share now, so you can find it out there and download it for yourself. Let's hop over to an instance where we have it installed, and I'll give you a quick walkthrough. So once you install Stagehand, you're going to have the Stagehand application over in your left nav. You can um, see all the different uh, places for the data and configuration that you might need. Um, where it all really starts and where you'll generally live is in the stage definition. Um, whenever we use the word stage here, we're talking about a stage as in staging a demo. You are setting the stage for what you want to show off. And a stage definition is simply the definition of what needs to happen to set up your stage for your demo. Um, once you come in here, you'll find that everything is annotated nicely, so you can dig into the details on your own time. Um, but essentially, in a stage definition, we do have a set of initialization data if you need it, and then just a set of jobs. These are things that happen in order to set up the data you need for your stage. And there are a few different kinds. I'll show you a couple. For this one, we'll look at one just to create a user. And this is just the create user type here. And we give you a few options for that. If you come down, you'll see the create user details. You can say, is this a persona that someone will need to log into to perform the demo? Or is it just raw data that, that you don't actually need to use to log in? You can assign roles, assign groups, throw in a profile photo. And then just come down here in template style, you can add all the different fields you need to to that user record. Another type of a stage job is just create data. So let's say once we create the user, we also need to create a change task. And you'll see that we do have orders on these. The jobs are, are triggered in the order in which you define them for the definition. So for create change type task, it's a create data type. And it's a little simpler. You just pick the table and then you set the fields on the record. Um, one thing that we can do is in things like a change request, you may have child jobs um, that need access to some of the data from the parent. So for instance, if we have a change request, we might need to trigger a child uh, change task. And in order to do that, we need to know what the parent is so we can set up that relationship appropriately. So you can do that as well. You can come on down, create your change request, create a child stage job, for instance, create child task. Do the same thing, it's create data type, tables change task, and then you can use JavaScript and this parent object to then do JavaScript parent.sysid and then set up this relationship appropriately. Um, you may find we're seeing here there's a, a bug in the platform currently that does show the template values twice. It doesn't affect the functionality of the app, but it is there. And you'll notice this JavaScript here. So you can always access the parent or the record creating in, created in the parent task. You can also always access this object called init data. And we document that right up here. And init data is all that stuff that you fed into the stage definition um, in case you need to have some seed data, user IDs, things like that. Um, and finally, the one other type of job that exists is just a script. There's nothing fancy here. It's just a server-side script. You can come in and do whatever you need to do, manipulating data, creating data, whatever it might be. So let me show you a couple other features we have here. Um, you'll notice that for create data and create user, we have a few check boxes. Um, one of those is whether or not we run business rules or whether or not we just insert the data. Another is do we set system fields, such as uh, sys updated on, created by, those things. Um, a more interesting one is add to init data. Um, in a situation where we're creating a user or um, some type of record, um, we might need that data all over the place, not just in a child task. We might need to know the user we created for child jobs or you know uh, stage jobs all over the place and in that case we can actually add to init data this record and then we can say uh, you know this is identifier of child task and from here on out you'll be able to access that in all subsequent jobs by doing init data dot child task dot field name whatever that field might be and then finally delay job this enables us to, um, usually all these jobs happen as soon as you trigger this, the stage definition. Delayed job allows us to say, let's hold off on this job and not do it until later. And you can select whether you do it on demand. We can call it via REST call or just a, a server-side script call. Do you want to do it X minutes after stage instantiation, which might be for things like inserting notifications or maybe triggering events um, that, that will show up in your UI and start showing up in data during your demo. Or finally on stage destroy, and those are just cleanup jobs. Once the whole thing's done, you might want to um, to clean up any approvals that were created, uh, any other tasks that were created, just to, to totally clean up the, uh, the the stage that you set. 
And once this thing is all created, you can come in and you can trigger your stage definition with this UI action. Instantiate new stage definition. We'll see right now there are no, are no stage instances yet. So once we trigger this, it's going to create a new one. So we're spinning up a stage. It's adding roles and all kinds of good stuff to the, uh, to the users we created. And then we'll say, now we have a stage instance. And this was instantiated by me. I own this stage instance. You could have multiple stage instances um, for multiple people on a, uh, a demo environment that's being used by multiple people. And if we come in here, we can see all of the records that were created as part of that stage definition. And the beauty of this is we're tracking these records so that whenever we're done with our demo, all we gotta do is come in here and destroy stage instance. It destroys this instance and it destroys all the records that we created for this demo. So it totally cleans up the environment, which is very handy. And that's really all it does. Uh, the rest of this is just setting up different ways for you to interact with StageHand. Um, you create the stage definitions um, here in the interface like normal. Whenever you're actually instantiating these though, um, we do include a REST API and this allows us to call and start up these instances um, from remote uh, ServiceNow instances or you know, using, using just a REST uh, puts and gets. So this is handy um, and also allows us, to, allows us to trigger those delayed jobs via REST call. Um, for instance, if we want to be able to tap somewhere or click somewhere in our um, client-side UI and trigger a change, like setting a, a task to state equals closed or maybe inserting a new event, um, we can do that from there. So that's about it. Come on in here um, and uh, download this and install it. You'll find some details in the properties page here, um, as well as annotations on all the forms that should explain everything that it can do. Um, but we think this might be useful to the solution consultants, to the people out there that are setting up demos just to help you um, spend a lot less time setting up data and cleaning up data and more time actually showing off your products. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.